but I even gave him my WhatsApp number by that time. Oh. So, what am I doing? But at the same time, it felt already good. He was not your boyfriend by then. No. I said literally to my parents, I'm giving everything up because I'm going to a random party oh, <laughs> in Uganda. Okay. Yeska is a Dutch woman who had a good job and a great life in the Netherlands. But one day, she shocked everyone by quitting her job. She told her parents that she was ready to give up everything and move to Uganda to start staying with Paul, whom she had not seen in seven years. Her parents were worried and everyone else thought she was crazy for making such a big decision. How did Yeska meet Paul? Watch her extraordinary story. In 2014, Yeska had a dream study from England since it was close to the Netherlands. But when she applied, the course options she was given did not align with what she wanted and she was very disappointed. Yeska had also considered to do volunteering work but specifically in Europe. So while she was online, she found an organization that did volunteering work all over the world. She contacted the organization and this marked the beginning of her extraordinary journey. And then I came to an organization and I say at first like, oh, I want to do it in Europe because still I thought it's yeah. safe. Yeah, you had not even thought about Africa. No, 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 no. Okay. Although I had like in the past in my mind that one day I want to go to an African country to like do which some. country? Yeah, well, by that time a lot of people went to Kenya. I don't know, it was kind of popular. Okay. So I had Kenya in mind. So I was uh, discussing with the guy and he said, but what about, are, are you also open to go to another country mm -hmm. if they have like an internship that you would love to yeah, do yeah. and that, that, that match what your, your wishes? And I said, well, my budget is not really big, so what do you have in mind? Yeah. He said, what about Uganda? Wow! And my first reaction was because I saw the movie uh, The Last King of Scotland about Idi Amin. Okay. I thought, is this safe? Or where are you going yeah, to send I me know. to? <laughs> and he was like, uh, yeah, it's safe. What, what is your problem? Yeah, had he traveled to Uganda yet? Yeah, the man knew Uganda. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he knew. Um, and the project where I could work on was uh, Kids with HIV. Oh. And, um, well, it did, in the end it was street boys, uh, but it was with theater and it was exactly what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And I saw the project and then I made a calculation like, okay, the ticket will be more expensive, yeah, yeah. but the cost of living is cheaper than when I go to England, for example. That's right, yeah. So then at the end, it was kind of the same mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, Let's go for it. <laughs> okay, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was the first time I went alone uh, outside of Europe. And uh, that's when you traveled to Uganda. Yeah, that's where I traveled to Uganda. Before Jessica traveled to Uganda, the organization had briefed her about cultural differences and some culture shocks to expect. So she came mentally prepared. When she arrived in Uganda, she was given a place to stay. And within her first three days in Uganda, she was given more orientation about Uganda's culture and culture shocks to expect. But everyone was telling me, you're going to have a culture shock, you're going to have a culture shock. So uh -huh. I was prepared on my biggest culture shock ever. And after one month, I was like, when is this culture shock is yeah, coming? What, what was the culture shock they told you about? They said Dutch people are really direct. Like oh. we say directly what we think, we, yeah, 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 yeah. we don't care. Mm -hmm. And I am really someone with a big mouth. I just <laughs> say, so yeah, say things yeah. what I think. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I have to be very yeah. like polite and mm -hmm. be like walking on my toe. Like. Yeah, I know. And then I realized, especially for some reason, the women on my project, they were also like joking around and making yeah. fun. And I was like, Oh, people do joke around. Oh, mm -hmm. people make like fun yeah. of each other. Mm -hmm. It is okay. And then I start to become more myself and yeah. I felt even more comfortable because at first I thought, oh, I have to just please everyone and can't make jokes. Yeah. But 
no, it was actually really a good experience. Jessica thought Uganda was a village, so she came over prepared. She bought a lot of shampoo and more personal items that would last longer because she assumed these essentials would be very scarce in Uganda. But after arriving in Uganda, she was very surprised that there were many shops that had everything she needed. Jessica had packed old clothes to wear because she thought people in Uganda are poor, so she didn't want to show off. And because I didn't want to look too fancy. And people think you have money, I get it, yeah. Well, but also <laughs> because I thought, oh, everyone is poor here. That was also on my mind, so I didn't want to show off. Yeah. And then I came on my project and saw like the women wearing nice skirts and dresses, and I was like, Oh, 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 I feel like a homeless person between all. You feel like, oh, I get it. So you uh, met some girls that were wearing nice yeah. clothes. And then for you, what you were wearing, you thought you were like a homeless person. Yes. Oh, that is so bad. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that was, but that was only in 2014. And like now that yeah. I've been here multiple times, I just bring the same clothes with me as I wear in the Netherlands. So. Yeah, so from there you said bringing some nice clothes. And, mm -hmm. okay. The place where Jessica was staying was in the rural areas of Nansana. So she thought the whole of Kampala was a rural area. But she was shocked when she came to Akashia Mall in Kampala. That's when she realized that Uganda was more than what she had imagined. And then I went to Akashia Mall and I was like in a shock, like, oh. Oh, whoa, what is this mall and why is this so fancy? I was just by that time in a, in a kind of shock okay. that this could exist. Did you face like some language barriers? Um, well, kind of. My English by that time was certainly not good enough. Okay. Uh, but I forced myself to speak English and uh, luckily my boyfriend got uh, spoke english as well so your boyfriend okay we are coming there because we want to know how you met your boyfriend yes yes mm -hmm. uh well that was what i called on the chicken night okay mm -hmm. <laughs> we were in the guest house mm -hmm. and uh we wanted to thank the volunteers who built the wall around yeah. our house mm -hmm. And in Uganda, it's really normal that when I celebrate my birthday, you can bring also your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was what happened there as well. Like mm -hmm. he was, he was part of the local volunteers, but he didn't, he wasn't joining that pro that project at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, since he knew from his friends, like yeah, oh, yeah, there yeah. is a nice party there, yeah, yeah. he came. Mm -hmm. And I, by that time, I wasn't actually very shy and also afraid because. Also, all the Ugandans say, yeah, you shouldn't talk to the volunteers because they are Mazungu hunters and you have to be aware. And they, they said, like, the, the, yeah, the people from the guest house say all those things. So I was sitting in my guest house and I was so nervous. And then I thought, okay, go out, make some friends, okay, show your people, face. The people at the guest house were also... Ugandan. Well, the, the people who lived, like the... the the people from the organization were Ugandan, but the hey. people, and they told me about the Mzungu hunters where I have to be aware for. Ah. And the people in the guest house were mostly from Europe. From Europe, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, um, but they have also some rules that uh, that's still something that I don't understand mm -hmm. because a lot of Ugandans were not allowed to enter the guest house by that time because oh. they had once a moment that someone stole something from someone and then oh, they didn't allow. I get it. So yeah. it felt, I felt always so com uncomfortable because it, I had the feeling that it, it became a little bit racist. Okay. I mean, because my boyfriend or the friends we made were Uganda, they weren't allowed to be in the guest house. Only the oh, white people were allowed, the white people allowed and the yeah. ones who took care of us. Mm, okay, so when uh, you're Okay, he was not your boyfriend by then. No. Yeah, you said he came as someone's friend. Yes, at the party. And I came out of the house because mm -hmm. I pushed myself like, okay, uh -huh. I have to be social now because otherwise I don't make any friends here. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. came out of the house and actually he was the first person who talked to me. Wow. And I don't know what happened, but we talked all night long. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even I was a little bit confused when I laid in bed and I was like, 
oh, I just gave him my number, but I even gave him my WhatsApp number by that time. Oh. So what am I doing? But at the same time, I thought, no, it felt, it felt already good. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, no, probably like, this is... You guys connected so fast. Mm -hmm. that, that was so good. So from there, after exchanging contacts, did you keep in touch? And uh... Yeah, yeah, we, we kept in touch and we saw each other almost every day. Mm. Uh, but then I had to go back to the Netherlands and uh, we oh. broke up by, by that time because it was really hard. We tried, but it couldn't. You broke up? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like <laughs> you, you had misunderstandings or it, you saw that maybe it, the, your relationship might not work because of the distance. Or oh, had you started dating already or you were still in the friendship zone? Yeah, I think it was by that time a little bit confused for both of us. Ah, okay. <laughs> so we thought, okay, let's, let's break up. But he, I always said he never uh, gave up on me. Oh, because every yeah. every year he sent me a birthday message and his birthday is three days before mine. Okay. And every year I thought, okay, he probably forgot me. It's okay. Uh, so I didn't send him a message. Oh my and God. then three days later I got a birthday message and I was like, Whoa. Oh, you felt <laughs> ashamed felt because you didn't yes. wish him a happy birthday. Hey? I know. Uh -huh. And then uh, COVID came. Okay. Uh, and then we kept actually more in touch because we were both in a lockdown and searching for a connection. Okay. So we start to uh, text each other. Um, and then I was still the whole time thinking, no, I shouldn't go for it. And I, I said it also to him, no, you should forget me, you should forget me. Okay. But I also had like in the back of my mind that I want to live for a certain month in Uganda again and see if I can build a business there. Mm -hmm. um, so when you travel to Uganda again, this time it was specifically for business yeah well that Not was for him. that was my mind yes that was my mindset but mm. before i came um i had the mindset like okay i'm going to try to go to uganda in 2022 yeah and i had in the back of my mind like i can stay at his place but it felt really uncomfortable to ask him since i just said to him that he should forget me yeah so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i just had made that uh uh, I just made that decision and then one week later later he texted me out of nowhere Wow and then I thought maybe this is a sign <laughs> from the universe mm -hmm. so I told him like okay I have this plan to go to Uganda and uh, see what happened and then he said oh you can stay at my place wait he suggested that you stay at his place mm -hmm. for how many years had you not seen each other seven Seven years. <laughs> yes. Wow. And but, I quit oh my, my job. I quit my rent, and I went. You went, you <laughs> traveled from the Netherlands to Uganda. Left everything behind, and I was staying with him. Yes. And everyone wow. thought that I was getting mental. They were like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah." But even if I come on the airport and I see him, and I think this is not the one, yeah. then I can still go to a hotel and we shall see. I mean, didn't you have this feel of like, I haven't seen this guy in seven years, and maybe you guys had not known each other that well by the time you were in Uganda, the first time you came to Uganda. Mm -hmm. Didn't you have like some fear or you were confident like... I... No, somehow my whole gut feeling says it's going to be okay. And okay, I think I see. it also helped. We had a lot of phone calls, oh, like yeah. Uh, yeah. just WhatsApp uh, calls. Yeah. So that that helped as well, the video calls. Yeah. And yeah, we both grew up. And I thought since we still are thinking about each other even after this long time. Mm -hmm. So, okay. When you arrived in Uganda, he picked you at the airport. Yes. And you started staying together. For how long did you stay together? Um, then it was five months. Five months. And yeah. then you had to travel back to yeah. the Netherlands. Yes. So, okay. Um, yeah. When you came and started staying with him, did you guys like, uh, did you start dating officially or it was like, oh, we are staying together, you know? Yeah, it was kind of, I don't know, it felt so normal somehow because, of course, it is really some big thing because I just gave up everything. I yeah. just start to live directly in his place, like uh -huh. in his home. Uh -huh. Uh, so we had also conversations about that because 
I can understand that it's for him also a big deal. You always live alone and then suddenly a person comes yeah. into your house like, yeah. hello, I'm here. But he was always like, no, it's, it's okay, it's fine. And it, somehow it felt like this is normal, this is how it should be. Yeah, but okay, it was normal. But um, did he at some point make a move like, okay, I want us to take this relationship to the next level? Or it was, okay, it's no more, we are staying together. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to know that moment when he made that first move that, okay, let's take this to another level. Yeah, well, the stupid thing, <laughs> my friends and I always make jokes about this. Yeah. Because he never said, like, officially, like, do you want to be my girlfriend or whatever. Oh. But the thing is, he started to call me already his wife to everyone. Oh my God. And this is my wife, and this is my wife. And I was like, okay. You can get his friends. This yes. is my wife. Oh my god. So, okay. uh, How did you feel about that? Well, at first I was like a little bit like confused, like okay. okay. Uh, but then I, I learned like, yeah, it's really normal to call people already your wife. Okay. Uh, and we also had a conversation about it. I said why uh, that I was joking around because yeah. we didn't have an official date that he said, oh, do you want to be my girlfriend? Mm -hmm. So I said it once to him and then he said, no, 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 you're just my wife and I know. <laughs> I don't oh. have to ask. <laughs> I was like, wow. okay. <laughs> okay. Are there things that, um, I mean, you guys are from different cultures. Are mm -hmm. there things about him that really shocked you? Like, uh, I mean, maybe like uh, how he does things his way, how you do your things your way. I mean, there can be some culture shocks. Um, yes, one of them is that... Uh, he doesn't say no. I think it's really Ugandan to don't say no. Yeah, in sometimes. Such, yeah, 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 yeah. In uh, in such a direct way. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes he did things for me that I saw that he doesn't like to do. Okay. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, you can say no to me. Yeah, when you're not comfortable. It's okay. With yeah, yeah. I I'd rather have you being comfortable and saying no. I'm yeah. okay with that. Then that's. You say yes, and I see on every yeah. part of your body like you're like, no, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I get it. For how long did it take you to meet his parents? Um, well, it took, it, uh, actually it took, uh, yeah, if we go, maybe it, it goes almost more than a year. But that was also because his family is living further away uh, uh, yeah. from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think I met his sisters already before. Okay. Yeah, when I was there in the first five months. Okay. Like in 2022. Yeah. But then, like his mother and uh, the rest of the family, I met uh, in Christmas. Like at the end of 2023. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was their reaction about their son bringing a woman from a different <laughs> culture? They were actually really excited. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so thankful for how uh, his family welcomed me. Uh -huh. And yeah, they, they really want to get to know me. And yeah. Every time when one of his family members called him, he, they're always like, is your wife there? Ah. And, uh, and I have to talk to them on the phone. They're they are really sweet. I mean, okay. So how about you? When you told your parents about him, where they like, oh, you're dating a black guy? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they were not surprised. No, well, they had already, I mean, I said literally to my parents, I'm giving everything up because I'm going to a random guy oh, in Uganda. Okay. Uh -huh. And my parents know nowadays that when I have something in my mind, they can say no, but yeah, they yeah. know in the end, yeah. everything will be all right. I see. But uh, what was their reaction when they're like, oh, are you sure? Like, um, Well, I think they were most worried about me going to like Uganda than okay. going to a random guy uh -huh. um, and it helped a lot that they met him in December 2022 okay. uh, because I wrote a letter to a Dutch TV show and uh -huh. they brought us together uh -huh. and then he could stay for I think it was one month in the Netherlands 
okay. uh, and then we celebrate Christmas together with my family mm -hmm. and I think that was also for me like a next step in our relationship yeah him traveling to a country and seeing how your life mm -hmm. is I mean experiencing your culture and I think mm -hmm. that was so amazing but what was that moment that made you feel like this guy's the one I think it was already on the airport when, when I just arrived okay. after seven years and I saw him and I was like, I made a good decision. Oh, that is so sweet. And it felt so, I don't know, it felt so natural and, and just like, yeah, of course we knew each other already for so long. Yeah. But texting is different than, of course, seeing each yeah, other. Yeah, 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 that's right. And still, I think it's really normal to have in every relationship your wrongles and yeah. and problems. But yeah, we solve our problems and we talk it out and it makes us stronger and stronger. And I think we become stronger every day together as a yeah. couple. And what are those qualities you, you really love about you that made you feel like, ah, this guy, <laughs> uh, yeah, I like this about him, that, that, that the qualities that make him special, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Well, first of all, he has also a sense of humor. I like that. Okay. We can laugh really much with each other. Yeah. Uh, but he is so kind. He's so sweet. He's really caring. Okay. He's, he's really, um, yeah, he's protective, but not overprotective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what I also like is he, yeah, and I think that's really a base on having a relationship, but he also yeah. trusts me. And oh, that's, yeah. I think, really important really when you have important. a long-distance relationship. Yeah, yeah, trust is important. Yeah. Yes, mm. that you can trust each other and yeah. that you can, um, yeah, also when I go to other places or going alone now here, that's also fine for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and that, that is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, trust is really important in a relationship because how can you love someone you don't trust? Like, Indeed, yes. Yeah, so I think, so that's, yeah. And like I said, he's really caring person he's so sweet for me <laughs> yeah so what is that message you'd want to say to him i never said this i think for him but i want to say like thank you for not giving up on me because wow. he keep on yeah texting me all the time and while i was trying to forget him okay. he was like no yeah. <laughs> so and that was that was really good and yeah like i said he's really sweet and caring and a good man yeah and i hope for everyone that they find a man like him oh, that is so sweet <laughs> i've watched you for years especially on tiktok mm -hmm. i got to know you on tiktok and what really caught my attention was how well you speak luganda ah. and sometimes i watch your skits and i'm like oh my god this woman is hilarious she makes me laugh like how did you come to learn to speak Luganda so well? Um, well, I had a teacher as well. And a teacher? Me, yes, okay. like uh, from the Makarewa University. Okay. Um, but actually, it's, I don't know why, but she had to do other things and then it, it, it just stopped. Mm -hmm. And for now, I'm just reading also the things she taught me and I try to learn it with an app. Okay. Um, but, I have to admit, my Luganda is not where I want to have it. Like, I, I'm now on the level that I can understand it, but yeah, I yeah. can't pronounce, like, speak, speak it, it. Some words, mm. yeah. When someone asks me something, I like, yes, I know what you ask, but now I'm confused. What do, what or, do I answer? What, yeah, I get it. But uh, did you learn it because of your partner or it is? Yes. Oh, that is so sweet. Yes, because for me it's also important to can communicate with, uh, communicate with his family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that and is so not all. Sweet. Yeah, a lot of his family members can speak Luganda, but not all of or English, sorry, mm. but not all of them. So I just want to be able to communicate yes. with them. I mean, I think if if someone can go that beyond, like to learn your language, I mean. It's a, it's a big sign of love, so. Mm -hmm. At the meantime, he is also learning oh. Dutch, so it's, it's oh. both sides, yes. So one day oh. we can speak both Dutch, Luganda and English. Yes. <laughs> I mean, has he learned some words? Yeah, yeah, and he had to, to get his visa as well. So I think his Dutch is even better than my Luganda.
Are you sure? Mm. Wow. Okay, tell us some words in Uganda that you, ah. that you maybe your, your favorite words like in Uganda. Okay. My favorite words. Okay. Mm. Oh, uh, I don't know if I have a favorite word. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe any word, any uh, word in Uganda. Well, I can say uh, and Zayetska and the Mudachi. Okay. Uh, I love, maybe my the most beautiful word is Nyansi Sa. Nyansi Sa. Like I'm grateful. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I say Uwebaleño, oh, uh, of course, a lot. Mm. And Nyabo Sebo. <laughs> <laughs> kale, okay. maybe Kale. I say Kale nowadays okay. a lot. Kale, Kale. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play some of her skits here so that you guys can know how or can watch how this lady is so funny. <laughs> like, she's a very, you, you know, you should start playing comedy because you're so funny for sure. Let me tell you, hey. most of you think hey. that we have to be working from morning up to evening. Hey. It's not supposed to be like that. Hey. <laughs> because hey. some of us, hey. our parents work in the government. Yeah. <laughs> we sleep hey. and sleep hey. and sleep. Hey. And in the evening, we drive Mark X. <laughs> Do you know why? Yeah. Because when those people are abroad the countries, yeah. when they make their money, yeah. they send us their money. Yeah. For us, we steal the yeah. tax. <laughs> You're going to see tomorrow one day, one day, yeah. when we are going to eat your women, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, see you. Yeah. Tell us, what advice would you give to single women? Uh, maybe single white women who are considering to date internationally, maybe in Africa or other countries. What that advice would you give to them? Ooh, well, first of all, I think you should you shouldn't care about what other people think because I think nowadays, yeah. still nowadays, there are a lot of people who have their assum how do you say it Assum assumptions assumptions uh, assumptions sorry yeah. assumptions on dating. African men, yeah, yeah. They, they are still nowadays like, oh, he only does you for your money. He has his own family, etc., etc., etc. If your gut feeling says this is the one, yeah, then follow this, follow that, and like travel, volunteering, but also online, you can meet so many people nowadays, mm -hmm. and yeah, the world is bigger than your own village. That's right. And no matter what everyone says or thinks yeah. about a relationship, you are the one who knows very well. That's right. You're the one who understands that person mm -hmm. than any other, anybody else. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this has been one interesting interview and I'm so honored to have you here. Thank you. It is so amazing. And uh, yeah, by the way, uh, Jessica is a YouTuber. She's a TikToker. She's also on Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I share um, her links to her social media platforms so that you guys can go and watch her videos and follow her. Please support her. <laughs> Show her some love. You know, she's a comedian. She has so much fun videos on TikTok and on YouTube. And I'm sure you guys are going to love her. So if you watch this video up to the end, and you really loved Jessica's story on how she met her Ugandan boyfriend, you can please let us know in the comment section because we would love to know what you think and uh, of her story, what you learned, and, you know, a lot. So just let us know in the comment section, and uh, thanks for watching. See you guys. Catch you in the next one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>